लिए प्रधानमंत्री जी को आमंत्रित करते हैं आई एफ एस सी हेडक्वार्टर्स भवन का शिलान्यास करें एन एस सी आई एफ एस सी एस जी एक्स कनेक्ट का लॉन्च करें आई आई बी एक्स का लॉन्च करें एक एनेबलर भी बनेगा इनोवेशन को सपोर्ट करेगा और इस सब के साथ ग्रोथ अपॉर्चुनिटीज के लिए एक कैटालिस्ट का काम भी करेगा अनेक महत्वपूर्ण पड़ावों को आज हमने पार किया है इनसे 130 करोड़ देशवासियों के सामर्थ्य को आधुनिक वैश्विक अर्थव्यवस्था से जुड़ने में और मदद मिलेगी गिफ्ट सिटी टूडे इज रेकग्नाइज बाय द ग्लोबल फाइनेंस सिटीज और ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल सेंटर्स इंडेक्स व्हिच इज समथिंग व्हिच इज लोकेटेड इन लंदन रेकग्नाइज ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल सेंटर्स in funds venture capitalists private equity funds or hedge funds all of them are looking at this jurisdiction for pooling of global funds that can be invested in india hello and welcome to this special program it is natural that financial market participants are focused on how markets are here and now while this is well and good we must also work towards developing new financial infrastructure as the country looks ahead this program is an attempt to throw some light on one such effort i am talking about the gift city and the international financial services center which is present there now prime minister narendra modi back in 2007 as chief minister of gujarat conceptualized the idea of the gift city and the vision was to create a financial center that can compete with the likes of london tokyo shanghai etc the place is spread over 886 acres in gandhinagar and it consists of a multi service sec which houses india's first international financial services center ifsc and an exclusive domestic tariff area a dta let's talk about the ifsc itself that is the international financial services center well simply put an ifsc caters to customers outside the jurisdiction of the domestic economy such centers deal with flows of finance financial products and services across borders london new york singapore and a few others can be counted as global financial centers and now gift ifsc is aiming to be one among them in recent events the prime minister inaugurated the india international bullion exchange the iibx and the nsc ifsc sjx connect that's a connect between both the stock exchanges since the ifsc is a place which operates by specially designed rules it needs a separate regulator as well So the government in 2019 established the International Financial Services Centers Authority the IFSCA which is a unified regulator for IFSCs in India IFSCA the regulator lays down the rules and it assumed the powers of four domestic sectoral regulators namely the RBI SEBI IRDAI and the PFRDA I caught up with the chairperson of IFSCA Mr Injeti Srinivas recently and began by asking him on the efforts to develop the gift city as a global financial center and the kind of players that that are calling now calling the center their home with respect to how it is developing uh, it has developed uh, in a phased manner uh, 2015 actually the ifsc at gift was operationalized uh, and from 2015 to october 2020 uh it was being managed by the domestic regulators the four domestic regulators so what you had was uh, the enabling framework uh, which was put in place by the domestic regulators it is in october 2020 that the ifsca uh, was uh, was uh, uh, established as a unified regulator and it took over the uh, development and regulation of the ifsc in the last 2 years there has been a significant uh, growth in the ifsc 
just to illustrate, in the banking sector, uh, prior to uh, October 2020, we had only one foreign bank. And today, you have eight foreign banks. And you have uh, 22 banks uh, uh, here with uh, a combined balance sheet of 35 billion USD, which was around 14 billion USD uh, when the IFSC was set up. So there is a, a exponential growth. Uh, similar uh, uh, experience has been in other sectors like uh, the funds, alternative investment funds. These are growing very rapidly. The two international exchanges here, they are also, uh, the volumes are growing uh, quite rapidly. So in the last two years, uh, the IFSC has made uh, rapid strides, uh, which is based on the strong foundation which was set up by the domestic regulators way back in 2015. Say Bank X, which has a presence in India, has got an Indian entity uh, operating uh, in and, and sort of offering services. Uh, when when we say that bank set, has set up at IFSC, uh, just the mechanics of it. Uh, okay. Yeah. And and uh, what is the need to be present in IFSC? And what can it do operating out of the IFSC, which it cannot do otherwise in other parts of the country? Yes. Okay. So, again, here uh, I would say that uh, conceptually you look at it as uh, uh, India as one country has two financial systems. Uh, so one is the domestic financial system and one is the international financial system. And the international financial system is operative in the IFSC. Uh, just as we have, uh, you know, 200 odd uh, special economic zones, we have one international financial services center. So it's a very unique platform where you are effectively treated as an offshore jurisdiction. So when, uh, let us say, State Bank of India opens a branch in New York, uh, it is guided by the regulatory framework of the Fed. And uh, it, is, uh, it, it has all those opportunities, business opportunities, which uh, are available internationally. Similarly, when uh, State Bank of India opens a branch here, uh, it is like an overseas branch of State Bank of India, and uh, they enjoy all the uh, uh, benefits and facilities which they enjoy at other offshore jurisdictions. Uh, let me again put it uh, in perspective in terms of the uh, uh, special uh, uh, benefits which banks get here. For example, uh, look at uh, HSBC. HSBC has been present in India uh, for over 150 years. It has uh, been set up here uh, one and a half years back. Today, it has a balance sheet of 3.5 USD, which is 20% of its India balance sheet built over 150 years. So in other words, you could uh, they could build a, a, a balance sheet of this size in, uh, uh, you know, 1% of the time, uh, which 1% uh, 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 of the time, uh, they could build 20% of the business they are built in the domestic area. Being here, uh, they can lend to the domestic uh, economy. Uh, uh, it will be like uh, ECB. They can provide uh, trade finance. We also allow uh, things like aircraft leasing. We allow uh, activities like uh, acquisition finance, uh, which are not available to the banks in the domestic area. So. One is that they have the international environment, uh, they have the benefit of uh, full convertibility, they can access the Indian market just as they access it from Singapore or Hong Kong, uh, they have cost advantage, uh, they have the advantage of a unified regulator and regulations which are globally aligned. So that example that you gave, I think that's very useful and very well explained. HSBC in IFSC is not HSBC India, but it's uh, an offshore entity operating. And when an Indian yes. corporate goes to borrow money overseas uh, and uh, sort of arranges loans through HSBC to, and goes to London, etc., New York or wherever, it can do that here in IFSC via the Absolutely. HSBC entity at the same Absolutely. terms, right? Not only that. Uh, for example, many of these banks, uh, foreign banks, they also uh, invest through FPIs. So uh, much of HSBC's uh, investments into the Indian capital market was being uh, channelized through the Singapore branch. 
Now that is gradually uh, uh, migrating to the, uh, the unit they have set up in the gift IFSC. So you are in a way uh, encouraging uh, India-centric business to re-domicile to gift rather than being uh, uh, conducted from offshore jurisdictions like uh, Singapore or Hong Kong or Mauritius. Are taxation uh, uh, regulations, etc., all now globally aligned or is that still work in progress? Uh, so, uh, see, this, uh, so, uh, this we'll have to understand that uh, as far as the Indian Tax, Indian Income Tax Act is concerned, uh, the entities here are domestic entities. So, whatever tax regime is applicable uh, to, in the domestic area is applicable here unless a carve-out has been given. And in that context, uh, to be competitive with other offshore jurisdictions, uh, uh, gift units enjoy a tax holiday of 10 years over a 15-year period. So that is a great advantage they have. Second, there are some special carve-outs. For example, if you want to in invest in, uh, as a non-resident in the Indian capital market, if you come through the domestic gateway, uh, you will have to uh, have your PAN and you will have to file annual uh, returns. Whereas if you invest it through the gift uh, jurisdiction, you don't have to have a PAN and you don't have to file annual returns. So uh, th there are simplified uh, procedures to that extent. And for non-residents, especially individuals, uh, it becomes uh, much more easier to uh, uh, to access the uh, uh, Indian capital market. It also offers similar advantages to residents. Uh, for example, uh, now uh, if a resident wants to invest in foreign securities, uh, they can use the gift platform. At present, you don't have foreign companies listing in the gift because it's still early days. But recently, a very innovative product was uh, listed uh, in the NSE IFSC, which is uh, uh, unsponsored depository receipts of American securities. Uh, these are tokenized receipts uh, which uh, are issued here and uh, the, it, it, it is uh, in the depository, international depository here and traded on the exchange. So, uh, and tokenized because uh, some of these uh, foreign securities, they are very expensive. They could be $2,000 per share. Now that can be fractionalized into 100 units. So you democratize uh, uh, the ownership of foreign securities. A lot of residents can also then invest in foreign securities and have better control because uh, it's just like uh, uh, investing in the Indian stock market. Uh, you have complete uh, 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 information of uh, what are the uh, uh, what is the stock price, and uh, you can uh, you can buy, you can sell. So those advantages advantages also are there. So on the retail side and on the institutional side, on both sides, a uh, lot of opportunities will open up. Apart from the regulations and the tax codes and, uh, you know, the physical infrastructure, there is also, uh, I mean, these are also by themselves great cities. Is that also a focus area to develop this place as, I mean, in terms of, so, in terms of just the social setting, what is being done in that regard, if you can outline for us? Yeah, that's important, but you'll have to look at it uh, from a, a different perspective. Mm. If you look at uh, a, a financial center, I'm not talking about New York and London, but if you're talking like a, uh, talking about a financial center, like say Dubai, uh, then uh, there's a lot of focus on uh, you know lifestyle and uh, all the uh, infrastructure and everything because they want uh, global business to gravitate to Dubai. There is no domestic economy per se where those players will uh, be interested in operating. But when it comes to India or China for that matter, uh, the, the real attraction is uh, the, 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 the market, uh, the domestic market and the potential there. Uh, so infrastructure of that nature, I mean, uh, of that quality is a secondary uh, requirement. But having said that, uh, I, I don't know if you have visited uh, the gift city, uh, it is truly international standard and it is uh, very impressive and uh, it is growing rapidly. Uh, in the first 10 years, uh, the gift city authorities had sold uh, uh, 10 million square feet uh, uh, of development rights. And in the last one year, they have sold uh, 11 million uh, square feet of development rights. Mm. So it shows that there is traction and uh, uh, the real estate uh, market is very upbeat. And I'm sure 
it will not uh, not long before uh, international players in the retail business will also be uh, looking at gift very intently well that was the ifsca chief but the gift city in gandhinagar balances itself to two important pillars we'll tell you all about that on the other side of this quick commercial break Welcome back to this special program. We are focusing on the International Financial Services Center in Gift City, Gandhi Nagar. Let's go across to my colleague Yash Jain, who is joining me right now. Yash was at the inauguration in Gandhi Nagar on the 29th of July recently. He's been following the developments there pretty closely. Yash, tell us what are some of the important pillars of the Gift City? Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to the Gift City was a big move in giving the Gift City the identity of being a gateway to the global financial capital. This identity of Gift City balances itself on two important pillars. The first one is the NSE IFSC SGX Connect, and the second one is the India International Bullion Exchange, or more popularly called IIBX. Well, through NSE IFSC SGX Connect, order on Nifty derivatives placed by members of SGX will be routed to, matched, and settled at the NSE IFSC. Essentially, the road to Singapore will go through Gandhi Nagar. The NSE IFSC SGX Connect will cover popular products like Nifty 50, Nifty Bank, Nifty IT and Nifty Financial Services and the exchange is expected to deepen the derivative market at Gift IFSC. What's the big goal? The average daily volume in Nifty futures at SGX is approximately 1,9000 contracts worth $3.65 billion. The goal is to transition these volumes from SGX to the NSE IFSC. Another important initiative was the launch of India International Bullion Exchange or IIBX. It's only the third exchange of its kind in the world. The purpose is to allow qualified jewelers to import gold directly using the exchange mechanism. Essentially, financialization of gold. The exchange will aid efficient price discovery and ensure standardization of quality uh, assurance and integrated sources of the yellow metal. What's the big goal here? It is to make India, which is the second largest consumer of gold, to be able to command the global gold prices. Prime Minister Modi also laid the foundation stone for the International Financial Services Centers Authority or IFSCA. It's the headquarter for the International Financial Services Regulator. That's not all that Gift City has got. A new development bank has also set up its Indian regional office. Also, international banks like Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan Chase and MUFG Bank have set up their units in the Gift City. All in all, about 200 companies, domestic as well as international, are expected to set up their shops in the financial powerhouse called the Gift City. Uh, Yash, thanks very much uh, for that. So lots of interest there in the city, lots of companies making uh, Gift City their home. Now, another thing which Yash referred to is one of the important components of the Gift City at Gandhinagar is the IIBX or the Inter India International Bullion Exchange, the first of its kind in India and only the third such exchange in the world. We caught up with the managing director and CEO, uh, Ashok Gautam, who said that this exchange will help bring about efficiencies of scale and better price discovery for gold. Listen in. Presently, we are working with uh, 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Uh, but we have uh, uh, we are actively engaged with the market participants as well as with the regulator. Uh, so uh, uh, hopefully uh, we will increase it uh, to maybe 5.30 or so. We'll let you know once those approvals come. We are an alternative channel and we want to bring in the efficiencies of scale. We believe that uh, more and more suppliers will come in and we'll, there'll be a better price discovery for the gold and consumers, uh, the qualified jewelers and the end consumers will certainly uh, benefit uh, because of these economies of scale and they will get a, a better price. Price which uh, our uh, qualified jewelers or the buyers and sellers will be putting, uh, sellers will be putting or the buyers will be getting, uh, will be the price which will be inclusive of, of this premium. Uh, but we believe that uh, today, uh, because of the consignment model, which is largely prevalent in India, uh, there is a 30-day consignment uh, cost built in. Uh, and uh, these are scattered uh, 
players who are trying to uh, arrive at a lot size on which the gold can come in India. But we believe that the suppliers, when they have uh, exchange as a center point and they can have access to large number or some of the biggest names in the industry as their buyers, uh, they will be able to pass on many of these benefits to the end clients by uh, giving a sharper price on the exchange. And as there will be multiple uh, sellers and multiple buyers, it will be a, a process of price discovery. And in a transparent manner, that price will be available for everyone to uh, uh, import or to trade. Well, TCS implemented the IT infrastructure required to run the trading and settlement at NSC, IFSC, SGX Connect. And JP Morgan brought gold in the walls of gift exchange for the first transaction at the India International Bullion Exchange. CNBC TV team spoke to heads of both companies. Listen in to their views. Well, lots of testing. Uh, you know, we have very strong redundancy built in for this platform. And uh, it's not, you have to plan for the fact that there could be an outage and how you will recover in a matter of minutes or less. And that needs a lot of testing. We are doing that. We also need to, uh, you know, take care of the performance between the production and the DR sites. So I think we are on top of that. Uh, it's, it's a matter of continuously improving on it because technology keeps improving. We need to keep pace and uh, we need to be able to recover quickly. You know, that's the way to be prepared. Now you have an exchange which becomes, uh, gives you a guaranteed settlement mechanism. So for international players to be able to trade with confidence without having to use banks and all the frictional costs that come with it, the efficiency and the liquidity of an exchange is what comes in. Uh, we've already brought gold into the uh, vaults here in SGX. Well, that brings us to a wrap on this special program, but we leave you with a promise that we will keep getting you all the updates on this emerging global financial hub, Gift City. Keep watching CNBC TV 18 for more news and updates.